So the spherical capacitor will be, will put some kind of positive charge here. And then uh, the outer, this will be like a spherical shell. And this will have negative charge. And we could have a circuit something like this. So uh, something like that. The idea is you put a certain a positive charge on the inner sphere, and then a certain negative charge will be induced in the outer sphere. And then you'll have actually a circuit right here, right? Um, and you have you create an electric field. between the two spheres. And we want to know what is the capacitance of this uh, capacitor. So the capacitance is going to equal, by definition, the charge of one plate. So this is Q. And this is negative Q. The charge of the inner plate divided by the potential difference between them. Okay, And the potential difference between them uh, is uh, negative the integral. Right? So we're trying to do here the potential difference between the, the, uh, the positive uh, charge, the positive uh, sphere is going to have a higher potential, and the negative one is going to have a lower potential, right? So we could take, let's call this one, um, let's do like this. Let's call this one the second sphere, number two, and this is the inner. And I could take the absolute value of V1. Uh, V2 minus V1. So when I'm taking uh, the capacitance, all I'm interested in is the absolute value of the potential difference. So V2 is going to be at a lower potential. The, the positive charge is going to be at a higher potential. So V2 minus V1 is going to give us a negative number. But when we take the absolute value of that, it gives us a positive. So this one is uh, absolute value of negative the integral from 1 to 2, E dotted into dr. And then the electric field between the two spheres, now we can use the electric field, uh, we can use the, um, from Gauss's law, the electric field that we derive for a sphere is uh, Q over, uh, KQ over R squared, right? So we can integrate that. from R, R1 to R2, KQ over R squared dr. And then it's going to give you uh, the integral of that is negative KQ over R. And the negative of that and negative of that, of that cancels. And you end up with uh, absolute value KQ over R from R1 to R2, absolute value of that. And you have KQ over R2 minus KQ over R1. And we, the absolute value of this. Now, since R2 is greater than R1, R2 is the outer radius, right? So R2 is greater than R1. So this one number is going to be a smaller number than that. So when we take the absolute value, we can just reverse invert them, and that will be positive since this one is negative. So we have Q over KQ over R1 minus KQ over R2. This now is a positive, okay? since R1 is a smaller number. And the Q and the Q and the Q cancel. The K comes out of the... Uh, comes out, and the uh, best way to say this is uh, 1 over k, r1, r2, divided by r2 minus r1. That's it. That's the capacitance. 1 over k, r1, r2, over r2 minus r1. Or we could write it as, uh, since 1 over k is 4 pi e0, 4 pi e0, R1, R2 over R2 minus R1.
Now let's see if this makes sense here, the formula. R1 is the radius of the inner sphere, R2 is the radius of the outer sphere. What happens as R2 goes to R1? What does the uh, equation predict? When R2 goes to R1, you basically have the spheres are going to be almost touching. So what's the formula predicting here? The limit of the capacitance, uh, R, the bottom is going to equal close to 0, right? So the capacitance is going to go to infinity. So as the outer sphere approaches the inner sphere, or you can say it the other way, as the inner sphere approaches the outer sphere, the capacitance of the capacitor goes to infinity. Is that the same behavior for a parallel plate capacitor? Parallel plate capacitor, area A, the distance between them is uh, D, right? The capacitance was A is 0 over D. As D goes to 0, what happens? The capacitance goes to infinity. Okay, that's good. So same behavior for the spherical capacitors. So uh, the the more the more you have the spheres touching, almost touching each other, the better capacitor it is. Think of it that way. Okay, because the capacitance becomes bigger and bigger. Okay, as R two goes to infinity, as the outer sphere goes and becomes bigger, bigger keep the inner sphere the same, let's say, then what happens? Capacitance becomes, well, uh, the, on the bottom, the R, R1 is going to be insignificant. So you're going to have 4 pi 0, R1, R2. On the denominator, R2 minus R1 becomes R2, because R1 becomes very small compared to R2. And the R2 cancels with the R2. So as the outer sphere becomes uh, infinitely large, but you still have only the inner sphere, the capacitance goes to some number, 4 pi 0 R1. What happens here? As the D goes to infinity, as the distance between the plates goes to infinity, you have uh, the capacitance goes to zero. So here's the big difference between the two capacitors. A spherical capacitor maintains its capacitance even when the outer sphere goes to infinity, even if you just have one sphere, it maintains its capacitance versus the parallel plate capacitor as the two plates go farther apart, the capacitance goes asymptotically to zero. Okay? So if we were to graph this, if we were to graph the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor versus D, it would be like this. As D goes to zero, it asymptotically reaches infinity. As D goes to infinity, the, it asymptotically reaches zero. If we were to graph the capacitance of a spherical capacitor, versus R2, the, the radius of the outer sphere, as the radius of the outer sphere approaches the radius of the inner sphere, it, uh, the capacitance reaches uh, infinity. As R2 goes to infinity, the capacitance of the spherical capacitor reaches some uh, capacitance asymptotically, which is 4 pi 0 R1. So it doesn't reach uh, zero. So you see that's the big difference. 